Russian President Vladimir Putin held a press conference at the conclusion of the BRICS summit in Kazan. Putin was repeatedly asked about the continuing hostilities between Moscow and Kiev and Kursk operation. The Russian army is acting confidently in all directions, this is also well known, no one denies it, it is moving forward in all areas of the combat contact line. It is also actively working in the Kursk direction. Part of the Ukrainian army unit that invaded the Kursk region is blocked, surrounded, this is approximately 2,000 people. Attempts are being made to unblock this group from the outside, to break through from the inside, so far unsuccessfully. The Russian army has begun to eliminate this group, Putin said. Recall, military units from North Korea have left their Russian training grounds and entered the zone of combat between Russian and Ukraine forces for the first time, the Military Defense Intelligence Service of Ukraine said. They will fight against Ukrainians in Kursk. Putin has not confirmed or denied the presence of North Korean troops in his country. At the BRICS summit, the Kremlin leader said it was not Russia's actions that led to the escalation, and accused Western countries of helping Ukraine fight Moscow. Instead, he recalled that Russia's parliament had ratified an agreement on a comprehensive strategic partnership with North Korea, signed by Putin in Pyongyang this summer, where both promise mutual assistance in case of aggression against one of the signatories. Let's see how this process goes, Putin said. While the Kremlin has insisted that Russia has the right to enter into any military cooperation it wishes with North Korea, and that any military activity is not aimed at third countries, Pyongyang has dismissed the news that North Korean troops are primed to enter Russia's war as groundless rumors. Kiev and Seoul say Moscow is planning to involve thousands of North Korean troops in its full-scale war. Russian lawmakers on Thursday ratified a pact with North Korea envisioning mutual military assistance, a move that comes as the U.S. confirmed the deployment of 3,000 North Korean troops to Russia. The lower house of the Russian parliament, the State Duma, voted quickly to endorse the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Treaty that Russia's President Vladimir Putin signed with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on a visit to Pyongyang in June. The upper house is expected to follow suit soon. The pact obliges Russia and North Korea to immediately provide military assistance using all means if either is attacked. It marked the strongest link between Moscow and Pyongyang since the end of the Cold War. The US said Wednesday that 3,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia and are training at several locations calling the move very serious and warning that those forces will be fair game if they go into combat in Ukraine. At the same plenary session, the State Duma also passed a draft budget proposed by the government. It earmarked 32.5% of its spending next year for defense, a record amount and up from a reported 28.3% this year, as Moscow seeks to prevail in its military campaign in Ukraine. The budget proposes spending just under 13.5 trillion rubles, over $145 billion, on national defense. That is about 3 trillion rubles more than was set aside for defense this year and was the previous record. The fighting in Ukraine is Europe's biggest conflict since World War II and has drained the resources of both sides, with Ukraine getting billions of dollars in help from its Western allies. Russian President Vladimir Putin is also looking how to sustain his military effort as spending has placed a huge strain on the Russian economy. Проект федерального закона о ратификации договора о всеобъемлющем стратегическом партнерстве между Российской Федерацией и Корейской Народно-Демократической Республикой. Пожалуйста, включите режим голосования. Кто за? Покажите результат голосования. За 397, против нет, воздержавшись нет. Федеральный закон принят единогласно. Поздравляем. На эти мероприятия деньги учтены. Технологическое лидерство. Мы э, э, с учетом тех 
потребности Министерства обороны и других силовых ведомств, которые участвуют в специальной военной операции, составили военный бюджет. В первоочередном порядке деньги на это учтены. Рассматривали вопросы на закрытых статьях, объемы увеличены по сравнению с уровнем текущего года. Это первоочередная наша, наша задача. Здесь и э, непосредственно закупка вооружений военной техники, денежное довольствие военнослужащих, обеспечение, как мы говорили, социальной поддержки семей военнослужащих, модернизация предприятий оборонно-промышленного комплекса. Если у вас только проценты по долгам, будет три с лишним триллиона. Понимаю, что главные позиции – это государственное управление, государственная безопасность, и государственная оборона. Мы максимально поддержим эту линию, но в целом считаем, социально-экономическая политика должна, в конце концов, вылезти из этой Ельцинско-Гайдаровской вороватой разрушительной клеи, которую протоптали. Мы воздержимся при голосовании. На голосование третьего. Законопроект в первом чтении принят. Туда. От этого ничего больше не прибавит. Можно прикрывать. North Korean authorities are isolating families of servicemen sent to Russia to support Kremlin in its war of invasion in Ukraine, Renhap News Agency reported with reference to the country's intelligence agency. Renhap reported that Russia pays about $2,000 per month for each North Korean serviceman sent to Russia whereas average monthly salary in the country was estimated at $1.13 as of 2022. The news agency estimated that the promised salary does not reach the North Korean servicemen or their families but rather remains with the state. In addition, the news agency quoted the head of the South Korean intelligence service, Chang Ho-jin, as saying that 3,000 military personnel from North Korea have already been stationed at training bases in Russia, with their total number expected to reach 10,000 by December. According to intelligence reports, North Korean military servicemen have not been deployed to the combat zone yet. They are being trained in the use of military equipment and drones as Russian instructors believe that without an understanding of modern warfare, North Koreans will suffer heavy losses. It should be noted that North Korea has denied sending troops to Russia. The country does not publicize information about sending its soldiers to Russia.